Manchester United have drawn with Liverpool at Old Trafford and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside. <laughs> if you hear my voice a bit croaky, it's because I've just been through two nights of WrestleMania watch-alongs, screaming at the top of my lungs at times, reacting to all the moments on my second channel. Shout out to everybody that was there on CM22, and of course over on Twitch as well at CM22ENT. And down to the nitty gritty, Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. First and foremost, it was a, a frantic fixture that had its ebbs and flows once again. That's not the first time in the last few games I've said that, and I'm sure Cappy feels the same. Going into the game, Manchester United had only two available centre-backs, Harry Maguire and a 19-year-old Willy Kambawala, who I believe had an assured performance next to Maguire. Defensively, we were far from perfect. I think everybody knows that. But... He definitely was a shining star throughout. And a shout out to Academy Scoop over on X, who, who covers a lot of the young up and coming Academy games and news. He did a really good profile of his journey before and, and since joining the club. I'll leave that for you guys to read. But in terms of his skill set down the line, he, he could be a decent option to have as long as those injuries stay to a minimum. And I think he's definitely starting to overcome those injury problems that were plaguing him at the very beginning of his academy career coming over to Manchester United. Delving deeper into the game, it was a decent start. Alejandro Garnacho scored an offside goal, but it seemed like a signal of intent. The way we began this game with a rigour, a flame lighted in our souls and in inside of the body of each and every player. That's the way you want to see Manchester United perform throughout. Liverpool were under him hitting passes, sorry, and just lacked the overall compactness and cohesion you would expect from a Jurgen Klopp side. Mm. Possibly you can attribute some of that to the atmosphere and occasion, but also Cappy alluded to something in his short. Liverpool have most definitely been able to find ways to get favourable results, but not without difficulty. And for sure, this was one of those games. Yep. With that being said, I still don't believe it was an outstanding performance by any means for Manchester United. Ultimately, the highlight of this fixture was seeing the weaknesses that both possessed on the day. When it comes to Manchester United, you always worry about what will happen when games fizzle out and the flame extinguishes. Shout out to cm22ent.co.uk. Make sure you go and check out the article. If you haven't already, match report settings, you know the video. Ultimately, it led to a Liverpool goal through Luis Diaz, who has been in some good goal scoring form since the turn of the year. He peeled away from a central area. Originally, when the corner was taken, ghosting in between, I think, Kobe and Wamba Saka and just backpedaled to the rear post. <sighs> Knock on by Darwin Nunez and he fires it home. It was a really good finish, to be fair, really good finish. Poor goal to concede on our part. And even after the game, Kobe said there was a, a misunderstanding at some point, which opened up the opportunity for Luis Diaz to do so. It was a difficult first half that started so brightly. Like what CM said, we, we had a flame lighted and, and just like that, it was all gone. That's all, uh, folks. That is all, folks. Whereas for the remainder of the first half, it was, it was sustained one-sided pressure, to be honest. They had 15 shots and, and we had none. For the first time at home in a league game since 2015. And I know in terms of conceding shots, we've been bad. But in terms of not being able to create opportunities, carve out opportunities against any opponent. Not good enough. And put pressure on a defensive backline and goalkeeper. It just needs to be better. Plain and simple. Another insane turn of events was the Bruno Fernandes wonder goal oh. that comes from Gerald Quantz's misplaced pass. These things keep on happening. Kelleher out of his area. First time strike with perfect placement. Just those moments like again what we spoke about last time out. These little things swing the pendulum towards those who benefit and luckily it was the boost both the team 
and the crowd needed in order to come alive again. Man. Yes, there's a strong argument towards Liverpool putting the game to bed in the first period of the game, but whenever those things don't materialise, it becomes a tight affair and boy, did we put ourselves in a position to, sh to shockingly, I can't even speak, shockingly snatch all three points after Kobe Manu's exquisite finish. Sweet build-up play down the left-hand side between himself, Garnacho and Aaron Wambasaka that culminated in a stunning touch, turn and finish like no other. Mm. For sure, it's an ex... <sighs> I don't even know what to say about that, man. Exceptional connection with the ball. Just a special talent overall, man. More to come for sure. But that moment, these days, I, look, CM said to me after the game, he doesn't really react crazy when it comes to Manchester United scoring goals. But that one in particular, it's those little moments that really put a life and soul back into you. And there were plenty of minutes to go after that for us to try and hold on to it. I believe Jurgen Klopp's side have scored the most goals in late game scenarios. And no surprise about that in the Premier League. We lost, the team lost momentum, right? And that's the overall problem. When you can't manage games to suit the skill set and current condition of the 10 outfield players, you always run the risk of being worn out even more in eventually exploited. Silly mistakes creep in like wan sliding in recklessly inside the area and taking down Harvey Elliott. Many people disagreed with the decision but, and, and, and look, I will say something about that. You know, there's numerous footage around the pitch and there's a main angle that I think a lot of us saw and you can see Harvey Elliott, he goes down early and then his right foot kind of clips the leg of Aaron Wambisaka. One thing I will say to rebuttal that is that Wambisaka puts himself in the position for the referee to make a tough decision. And yes, VAR once again is on hand to look at that clip multiple times. But what we've learned through the use of VAR is that seeing it back in slow motion almost makes challenges look worse than what they were. So if Wambisaka's tackle potentially looked bad in, in real time with the referee seeing it. It's going to look worse in slow motion. So it, it's a tough one, right? Because with Manchester United these days, I always look at the situation and say, you've got to do enough to win games and, and not rely on these little small decisions. Sometimes they can affect games. Sometimes teams do everything they can to get results. And it's these decisions, these fine margins that make or break them. But ultimately, I don't see this Manchester United team as one of those sides, you know. So I don't want to be using excuses like small little refereeing decisions that could have gone either way, in my opinion. So ultimately, when you tackle like that, like I said, it will always be a high risk manoeuvre. That even makes one be, in this case, look like a hero or Diogo Delo against Chelsea. <sighs> Sorry, man. Uh, if you didn't know, it was the latter and... Mo Salah scored the penalty. He scored against us like he always does. When it comes to Manchester United at the moment, there's a lot of rinse and repeat. Not in a good way either. The, the small amounts of positives get overshadowed because of bad habits. Bad habits. And I know we've said it multiple times already, but the story of our campaign so far. And a, and a collection of errors that culminate in mediocrity as well. Opinions, just... There's a lot of repetition and that needs to change. I'm afraid of who certain figures are becoming, but ultimately we'll have to see what Ineos in particular decide to do once the reviews are over and new figures are hired. Sure. That will be the most important change when it comes to on-pitch success, I believe. So I'm watching closely. Lasers in my eyes like Cyclops. I need to see what is going to happen and it needs to be purposeful or anything to change on the pitch. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, housekeeping settings, make sure you go and check out cm22ent.co.uk. Latest match report, of course, is up. We try and get it up as well. CM does the work. He tries to get up at least an hour and a half after the game, sometime sooner. So, make sure you check it out. 
great writing as always so poetic the imagery is just amazing it immerses you back into that fixture so please it would mean a world to both of us if you could check it out Bournemouth next Saturday there's no midweek game we're not in Europe or anything like that so we can chill we can rest enjoy some Champions League football and all of that jazz make sure you go and enjoy the game on Saturday especially to the travellers to those watching and look out for the article next Saturday of course and the United Twins that should be out on Sunday we're back to the regular scheduling now that CM's got his little WWE Wrestlemania out of the way yeah follow us on social media CM22ENT over on TikTok and Twitter for you know small clips of the episodes just promote share to your friends and frenemies same with this video by the way hit the like button subscribe if you're new share to your friends and frenemies and until the next time We'll see you lot soon.